when State Council and Foreign Minister Wang Yi met uh, the Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister this time in April, they mentioned the construction of the China Thai Rail Link, which you said has been progressing uh, not as fast as you would have wished. Um, but what is the significance of that? Can we finally look forward to the rail link linking the two countries finally? Well, the project in Thailand is, is proceeding. Um, it's just um, slower than uh, many had anticipated. But I think the desire for connectivity is certainly there. You know, China has the Belt and Road um, Initiative. ASEAN has its connectivity agenda. Um, it all adds up. Um, and, you know, I've always said that whatever agreements you may have on paper concerning um, the exchange of goods, trade and services and so on, physical connectivity will be the facilitator to make uh, the agreements turn things into concrete uh, exchanges and benefits. So I think um, there is support. Um, we just may have to make sure that uh, the management of the project uh, can be efficient and uh, can be more uh, speedy. Well, people may ask, what's such a, why is such a big deal to have this rail link? I mean, you have freight cargo, you have shipping, for instance. Why the emphasis on this um, train connection? Well, you know, we, we know that uh, for many goods and services um, going through, um, you know, by land, um, whether it's by rail or by road, um, can be uh, more convenient, uh, can perhaps get um, the goods and services um, in time uh, better. And of course, uh, just connecting up, uh, allowing people also to travel um, between these countries uh, can only help um, cement and enhance the already strong relations. When you were in office, what was your um, biggest takeaway as to how countries can best improve or cement their relationship uh, or develop their relationship with another country? If you were to, hi to recommend, to highlight, to suggest something, what would it be, for instance, for, for China and its Southeast and Asian countries to come together and make a bigger difference for peace and development? I think uh, the important thing is to identify all the common interests. And there are so many aspects of uh, common interest between any two countries but of course uh, between Thailand and China in, in particular. Identifying those areas and working sincerely to achieve uh, a better outcome in those areas, I think is key. Um, there will also, of course, be um, issues of various aspects where um, there is not complete agreement. Um, the thing is not to allow those kinds of problems to um, cloud over uh, what we could do together to achieve common interests. Do you think that is the problem that the world is facing? Because right now we, re we are in a different era, right? I mean, from the time when you were uh, in office, we're seeing so many problems, so many conflicts, even direct military conflicts broken out. And then we have, uh, of course, I don't need to hide it, you know, the heightened tension between the US-led West with China and, you know, the position of many Asian countries also shifting into a more confrontational, at least that's the way it's perceived here in China. What exactly has gone wrong? Has something gone wrong, according to you, sir? Um, we can, I think all of us um, everywhere can, can feel that tension. And it's clear um, that because of the changing world and because perhaps of different cultural and uh, due to historical factors, differences in values, um, obviously contribute to this tension. Um, the problem, of course, is that um, for the citizens of the world, most of their problems uh, now transform borders, are global in nature. Uh, but we have never had a good, strong global system of governance. And uh, I think the, the problem with the system of global governance is for many countries, they feel that their voices are not yet properly represented or heard. Uh, and there are a number of powers who can then dictate um, that, that system. So um, the, the world needs a strong and accepted system of global governance. We need a strong system 
of uh, multilateral cooperation where everybody plays by the rules um, and um, respect countries large or small. Um, if we can get into that mindset, into that uh, mentality uh, with all the parties concerned, then perhaps we, couldn't, uh, we can move uh, away from the current situation with all this tension and conflict. Uh, this year seems to be the Asian moment, right? We have uh, the BRICS summit, we have the APEC, we have the G20. Um, very interesting, you mentioned the culture of Asian countries, of Asian leaders. Well, not everybody, but uh, by and large, there is a sense of uh, trying to avoid t a conflict, right? Trying to not to step over the turn, not to irritate the others, but to find commonality so that there is a certain level of harmony so that you can, you know, coexist together. So what kind of input from a cultural perspective, perhaps, uh, can this Asian moment inject in the much needed um, um, way out for global governance? Well, let me say first that I am um, disappointed by the degree of international cooperation uh, in the current situation. You know, with all the countries almost facing common problems, you know, economic and otherwise, uh, we don't see the kind of coming together uh, in the way, for instance, that we, we saw back when there was the global financial crisis with the uh, G20 coming together and so on. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and that's going to be a challenge for Asian countries that are, of course, hosting uh, these important meetings of your men, that you mentioned, um, the BRICS, of course, that is uh, about to take place. But later in the year, um, APEC and the G20, where APEC and G20 in particular are really primarily economic forums. But there is now a real possibility that because of the conflict um, in the Ukraine, that uh, uh, the parties that should come together at these meetings uh, will not engage with each other the way we would like them to. So I think um, the, the big homework now, I guess, is for all of us to work out a modality where um, APEC and G20 can still serve their purposes of bringing people together to, to help resolve the economic problems. And if there are issues that um, that still uh, highlight the differences, maybe in the security or, or the, in the political dimensions, um, being dealt with in the sidelines uh, through some form of engagement. Um, of course, everybody should be free to express um, their views and what they feel, what's right and what's not. Um, but I think we all have a responsibility to try to engage to make sure that there is peace, uh, which is, uh, a factor, a fundamental factor that will contribute to prosperity. Another very concerning trend is the growing interference or growing presence of uh, uh, military forces, military presence by countries that are not, you know, uh, situated in this part of the world. I, I don't think I need to name any specific countries or any specific army, but uh, the thing is, you know, the kind of military um, miscalculation uh, has, re has markedly gone up and uh, people are blaming China, of course, for being the initiator of the high tension because it is more, quote unquote, assertive. And, uh, but if you look at the kind of security arrangement, you know, on different layers, we have the AUKUS, we have the Quad, and then we probably have the Asia Pacific version of NATO as well, kind of up in the air being discussed. How do you look at this trend? Well, I won't go into specifics, but I can certainly say that what we really need is a higher degree of trust. Um, I know there are differences, clear differences between, you know, the different powers being each particular situation. And that, I, as I said before, may reflect uh, certain values or, or culture. Um, but the point is, um, there will continue to be differences and diversity in the world. And we should try to learn to, live, to, to be able to live together despite these differences. Um, that's not going to be helped if there are actions that create suspicions and fears more than trust. So I think trust building is probably the, the highest priority. Um, if the direct 
parties to the conflict, as it were, cannot do it, uh, we should try our best um, to make sure that others uh, play a role in, in bringing everybody together and build trust. Um, ASEAN has always prided uh, itself on having this concept of ASEAN centrality, um, having a number of uh, platforms and forums like the ARF, uh, the East Asia Summit and so on. Uh, and we should really make use of that uh, to build trust, first of all, because I think if there is a higher level of trust, um, then there is less chance of miscalculations and misuse of uh, military and, and, and powers and other forces. Finally, uh, later this year, there will be a very important meeting taking place in China with potential implications for countries all over the world, which is the 20th uh, meeting of uh, the Communist Party of China. Uh, what is your expectations of that party and what are you paying particular attention to? Well, of course, the party's um, success has been uh, well documented, especially with the celebration of the 100 year anniversary last year. I think as the world emerges from the pandemic, um, as we face new challenges that we've already discussed uh, over the last uh, 10, 20 minutes, um, China with her um, potential uh, in terms of contributions to um, global development. Um, and of course, President Xi himself used the, the, the word global development as an initiative to make sure that uh, we all contribute to the achievement of the sustainable development goals. Um, we'd like to see uh, uh, you know, initiatives and directions uh, that can give us a very good idea of how China and the Communist Party would be contributing to these issues. Would you be visiting China anytime soon once the restrictions are lifted? Well, <laughs> yes, one, once the restrictions are, are lifted, um, I would love to be able to, to visit China again. Thank you so much, Sir Apisit Vechachiva, former Prime Minister of Thailand, joining us from Bangkok. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.